in velocity according to the processes. And uh, in the red box, uh, we are uh, plotting the fastest processes for climate. They are con all connected to the ocean atmosphere coupling. All the rest are <coughs> <coughs> connected to other forcing. And there are peaks in their plateau that uh, are between the, the peaks. In their uh, um, uh, right uh, plate, we can investigate a bit more the motivation or the causes of these uh, uh, peaks in the in the spectrum. Uh, remember, this is the the relative variance is plotted uh, in terms of uh, a logarithmic scale. So a, a, a big uh, juggle means a substantial in, increment in the in the variance associated at that period. Of Here we have frequency, not not period, but oh, is the same. The the longest. Uh, uh, scales are uh, uh, the galactic forces relative uh, of uh, uh, ice age uh, cycles uh, or uh, slightly for faster cycle. Then they have the astronomical forces connected to the oscillation, uh, periodic oscillation of the Earth. So the precession of the equinox, uh, the uh, eccentricity, and so on. Then you have the faster, uh, well-known faster uh, cycles like Dangar, Dangar, Öster, the, the Henry and, and so on. And in the box, we have, look at, uh, again, as, as before, only atmospheric oceanic force. So the climate is forced, or the, uh, the variability at this scale, say, or the centennial scale and faster, the variability of the, of the atmosphere essentially is uh, uh, um, explained in terms of Earth ocean system. You cannot explain or, or talk about atmospheric uh, uh, climate without taking into account the substantial uh, contribution of, uh, of the ocean, ocean and ice, obviously. But you see there are uh, uh, the, the shape of the of the of the peaks are different. Some of them are very broad because it depends on internal mode of variability, and sometimes there are stochastic force uh, um, uh, uh, variation, and uh, other are uh, like tides. Here you have. Uh, Tides uh, uh, they are directly influenced of moon and 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 and, and sun that influence. So uh, <coughs> the, the um, shape and the intensity <coughs> changes with the with the frequency. Generally, we have more energy in longer periods, but in, uh, in the case of uh, oceanography processes, you have specific processes we are very intense like tides for example that are very well defined in terms of frequency so the superposition of scales is uh, um, the uh, well explain what we can observe now and to understand better uh, the, the extant situation of the ocean condition we have to go back in time in order to saw uh, uh, or to understand or to estimate this, this kind of, of, uh, of behavior. And, okay. Uh, this, the previous graph was, uh, do, do you know, excuse me, how to uh, move, uh, okay, maybe, okay. Done. And um, okay, um, let's move from uh, the the climatic uh, uh, cartoon that uh, highlight the dominant uh, frequency or period 
of the of the forcing affected climate to more oceanographic uh, 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 issue. So in the plate we see a uh, uh, power, power spectral density of a, a current calculated at, uh, at the Middle Atlantic uh, Ridge is just uh, an example. So we see that that, that again we have some log-log uh, uh, plot, so uh, a huge number of different uh, 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 time and, and, and frequency and, and, and power uh, scales are plotted here. And we see, we can divide the, 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 the plot in two parts, the, the so lower uh, uh, frequency and the higher frequency here, and there are two different uh, um, behavior. This, uh, um, this part of the spectrum, the, the, the lowest frequency, uh, are directly forced by atmospheric uh, variation. And uh, the energy decreases exponentially uh, from higher frequency, as you see, as a general tendency. But um, the process generally is a turbulent process that uh, transfer lower frequencies uh, from higher frequency, low frequency to higher frequency is uh, connected to the nonlinearity of the ocean. And at the very end, uh, this, uh, oops, sorry, sorry. At the very end, um, the viscosity will, uh, say, uh, dissipate the energy connected to the very short, very short uh, uh, um, frequency and, and also wave, uh, wave numbers too. Um, uh, the, the, the explanation of that is quite complex, I think, and I'll try to uh, show uh, in the next uh, uh, slide some of a very large, uh, very broad uh, vision of these processes. But um, the, the concept is that the, the viscosity of the ocean is so small as the order of uh, um, uh, 10 minus 6 meters square divided per uh, second. And uh, you can safely assume that the large scale processes are invisible. And uh, the transfer from one scale to the other is uh, uh, also uh, adiabatic. So no, uh, uh, no energy is lost from one side, from one frequency to the other. But, but when viscosity uh, becomes to be relevant at that scale, order of uh, millimeter, then viscosity can play a role. And in that case, energy is dissipated uh, and transformed in thermal energy. Again, there are similarity with the previous uh, uh, cartoon. So um, again, we have more energy connected to the lower frequency. So that is a so-called red uh, shift um, spectrum. And uh, again, there are peaks connected to the uh, um, frequency connected to, to, to the uh, component of the uh, tides. And also there are part, uh, sort of um, um, a broader peak connected to the uh, inertia wave, the waves that are um, induced by changing of the wind and whose um, uh, return force is a Coriolis, in which the, uh, the frequency is, is related to the Coriolis force. So we have some, some peaks, but all the rest seems to be very uh, uh, um, very uh, uh, noisy, even if the general trend is quite clear. In the highest frequency, internal waves plays a, a major role. You know, if you have a stratified ocean, uh, the, the interface can move and oscillate, and uh, 
having the, as a turn first the, um, uh, the reduced gravity and so they are quite slower compared to the surface uh, surface wave but this is another another issue so again to close to this point uh, the structure of physical processes recorded at um, as at one side but they're quite generic as again the same or generally speaking, the same shape for some peak connected to specific uh, uh, processes plus uh, a tendency toward low energy at high frequency and a continuous changes of the energy input uh, at low frequencies at higher frequency. Why it, it happened this? We have two contrasting energy and entropy uh, cascade. On the uh, left side, we have the two cascade. Uh, when you have uh, the turbulence in the ocean, we have already heard about uh, turbulence in your in your uh, uh, studies before, for I'm sure, and <clears throat> turbulence is ubiquitous and it is a, a big problem as not, not solved, and but play a, a, a major role. Um, the eddy kinetic the 3D is has the tendency to go from large to small eddies. What we saw in the previous um, previous uh, uh, plot can be interpreted partially in this in this sense. However, when you have a 2D uh, uh, flow, so a 2D problem, uh, the eddy kinetic energy, so the turbulent kinetic energy, is transferred from large to small scale, to uh, vice versa. So, to, sorry, this is wrong. Uh, from the small to large scale. And you see here, this is a large pattern that goes to small pattern. This is 3D. The 2D is the opposite. So you have two contrasting energy cascades, one for the small scale that goes down, the other one goes up in, in terms of the sky scale dimension. But how is the ocean? If you look at large scale flow, we have the ocean essentially a 2D. Why? Let's make an, an example. Take a, a A4 paper and uh, looking at uh, uh, the dimension and look at the definition, the aspect ratio, which is the ratio between the, the, um, the height and the, uh, and the, 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 the original dimension. You see the, the delta A is 5 per uh, um, 10 to minus 4. Doing the same for Pacific Ocean, you obtain a very similar uh, similar number. What does it mean? The aspect ratio of the ocean is similar to um, uh, paper sheets. And in this sense, we can as safely assume that 2D dimension is dominant. And in uh, in under this um, this uh, 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 hypothesis, the 2D uh, 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 um, turbulence, geostrophic turbulence, as, as I is called, is, is the dominant part. Differ they behave, the, the things behave different, differently when you go down in dimension. If you look at a, a vertical process like a water column, then in that case, the number or the, the aspect ratio is totally different, and the 3D uh, uh, turbulence is the dominant process. So, again, it depends on the scale you're looking at. So, if you look at the global scale, you have a 2D dominant uh, 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 and edgy kinetic transfer. When you go down to the uh, Water column or to small, small uh, problem that three D fully de develop uh, uh, turbulence processes are the dominant in transfer uh, energy and the, the square of the vorticity to lower, lower, lower frequency. 
Okay. Uh, just to um, uh, summarize a bit what we have seen, if you have seen uh, up to now, um, the variability can be classified in terms of unforced variability, which is the variability due to internal dynamic of ocean atmosphere coupling, forced variability, which is uh, the variability due to some changes in the boundary condition of climate system, volcanic eruption, solar variability, or the human impacts, and astronomical variability, which is the longest part that is due to the interaction between variation of Earth, orbital parameters, and the cycle of carbon and, and ice. So these are the three uh, uh, issues. We'll talk about essentially to unforce variability during these lectures. Which are the scales of the enforced variability? Uh, weekly to month is associated to uh, the uh, ocean uh, mesoscale. Even some mesoscale processes, some eddies, some rings can last more than months, even, even uh, uh, years sometimes. Interannual, interseasonal variability that uh, might result for internal ocean dynamics or interaction between ocean atmosphere. For example, some upwelling could be an intraseasonal. The seasonal cycle is connected to the solar and atmospheric annual cycle. So uh, uh, the, 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 the seasonal cycle at the mid latitude and high latitude are quite relevant. In the tropics, you have some seasonal cycle. We will see some example, but it's less relevant compared to the, uh, the, the, the mid-latitude seasonal cycle. Then we have another important uh, scale, which is interannual variability. So the, the variability that has a period, periodicity longer than one year. That's my result from ocean atmosphere interaction and, uh, uh, <clears throat> and feedback on a time scale of the few years. And but you can explore also decade of variability. And now we have enough data to have and well, scientific uh, uh, um, evidence for that is the uh, decade of variability possibly connected to the long-term persistence of atmospheric large scale pattern. This is still a matter of uh, investigation is not totally or fully explained. Then we have longer, uh, 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 variability, such those uh, affect the global conveyor belt that you may, may know that uh, takes about 1,000 years to do the whole uh, uh, um, path. And uh, so to, to, to su sum up a bit, uh, a, a superposition of different uh, <clears throat> uh, um, processes give the, uh, um, the, the, the the ocean conditions. So uh, every um, uh, unforced variability um, has its own uh, forcing or explanation, but uh, the effect is uh, the combination of them. The, the bad news is that this uh, coupling or the, the um, superposition of these uh, different scales is not uh, totally independent. In the sense that we try to, I'll try to show you here in a very, well, naively way, the fact that the scale are interlaced between them. And this essentially happened in the advective nonlinear term. The advective nonlinear term in the moment equation is the responsible of the multiple scale coupling. And uh, well, maybe I go back uh, to do do, the, uh, to do so or to try to do, to demonstrate that I take the uh, um, uh, expansion in Fourier in uh, 
truncated Fourier series of uh, a variable, for example, the velocity. And uh, um, you may remember that the, the Fourier series, the periodic function composed of a harmonically related sinusoids combined in, on a, by a winter summation. Um, in this way, uh, uh, one cycle of summation can be made to approximate any arbitrary function in that interval. No? So this is something that can help us in reducing or projecting uh, our um, uh, function on a orthogonal basis, which is given by this exponential. If you look at our uh, uh, <coughs> effective term, <coughs> uh, you can uh, uh, rewrite it in terms, this is very, uh, uh, um, quite, quite trivial in this way, um, and uh, using the so-called uh, the uh, flux form. And uh, exploiting this definition, we can substitute the uh, um, truncated Fourier expansion and obtain a double sum where you have the combination of uh, 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 frequency. Um, you may remember that you can express this uh, imaginary exponent, exponential function in terms of sin and cosine. So we have the possibility to uh, um, explicitly mention uh, uh, the, um, or um, appreciate the fact that the two uh, frequencies are somehow uh, combined and modulated by the, uh, the coefficient. What does it mean that the single, every single uh, 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 frequency for the, this one is not only modulated by a constant, but all the other of the other um, uh, frequency in, in uh, uh, to some extent, obviously. And this means that you cannot, <clears throat> uh, um, you cannot uh, 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 disregard the coupling between scales uh, uh, whenever the linear term, non-linear term is, is relevant. Uh, for example, when you have uh, the, uh, a flow uh, with a, um, a rain, low Reynolds number, uh, the advective term is uh, not important compared to Coriolis one, which is the dominant one. And most probably in that case, this multi coupling is not important. But whenever you have a, a Reynolds number, uh, which is uh, 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 higher, is about one or higher. Well, in that case, most probably the uh, nonlinear term plays a major role and the multi scale coupling takes place. This is true, for example, for uh, smaller uh, uh, scale process like a mesoscale or um, jets or uh, 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 France. And in that case, uh, the, this multi scale coupling is, can, can take place. In, in a more evident and, and stronger way. Uh, we have, we talked about uh, uh, indirect, uh, um, we'll say, um, uh, comment on what scales are, the re re relative relevance, uh, the, the coupling and so on. Here we have um, a snapshot of uh, um, uh, an analysis or reanalysis. I mean, you know, uh, the analysis in the in the modeling uh, jargon is a combination of data and model output, which is the most, uh, let's say, reliable uh, approximation uh, of uh, 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 a system when some uh, uh, data are are available. Here. This is uh, only uh, um, surface height anomaly 
is, uh, this is not important, which is which is the variable plotted. The importance is here, a important issue here, is what we see. You see here in, in the top left plate is not filter uh, um, uh, 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 surface height anomaly. And uh, the, 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 the pattern is very confused. There are a lot of noise. There are some structure that are more evident than the other, but you cannot distinguish very well what happened. Uh, if you, um, let's say, filter with a low pass filter <clears throat> with a cutoff uh, frequency of 100 kilometers, then you can have you obtain this uh, uh, picture, which is the same of, of the previous one, but large part of the noise is uh, uh, removed. Uh, repeating uh, with the uh, more and more uh, higher frequ uh, cutoff frequency, you see uh, the same images, but uh, a bit uh, smeared out by the effects of the of the of the um, Of, of the filter. And uh, even with a cutoff frequency of 300 kilometer, some energy, some uh, uh, signal is evident. What does it mean that uh, some um, signal is present at different scale and all the scale are superposed? And uh, this is essentially confirm what we said what we said before. Uh, interestingly, this kind of uh, approach is useful whenever you uh, um, deal with uh, a, a picture. Time is not accounted. Evolution is not. We have a more sophisticated. Uh, uh, um, approach very often used in atmosphere and ocean oceanographic ocean sciences, which is the empirical toran function analysis. So I will introduce very quickly some uh, basic principle of this analysis because the terminology used uh, here is often used also in the uh, um, in, 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 in both uh, atmospheric and ocean science to explain and to comment the results because uh, it's very uh, effective uh, method to reduce the complexity of the of the of the of the system and try to uh, end up in sensible explanation of the, of the um, underlying processes. So UF analysis or empirical or total function analysis is also known as a, a principal uh, component analysis is often used to use the spatial modes. UFs are often called modes of variability and how they change of, with time. This is the first and most important issue. Before, we can use also filter to have this, um, um, uh, to discriminate different scales. But in this case, you used a single uh, uh, instrument and a single uh, numerical to, to discriminate uh, spatial modes and their time evolution. And uh, a field is, uh, whenever vi variable you have, is partitioned into mathematically orthogonal modes in time and in space. Which is the strength, uh, strength of this approach? One, no uh, a, a priori hypothesis on the uh, related to some um, uh, statistical model to be uh, applied. It's not parametric. We don't need that uh, the, the, our data set is Gaussian, but this is not based on a physical principle. So sometimes we'll see, we can try to use it to interpret physical, uh, to give a, a physical interpretation to UF and PCI, but it's not 
uh, 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 directly related with the method. So as a mathematical methods can be interpreted by a physical point of view, but it's not guaranteed that it always is the case. Or oh, the formula is quite simple. You have a generic variable, which is a, a Z that can be expressed uh, with a, a finite sum of uh, UFs multiplied by uh, the, the principal component. UF depends on the space and uh, they are orthogonal by, uh, by uh, construction, by building, and uh, they are not related. The same can be said for that. Uh, and, uh, the the, the principal component has no special dimension, is constant in time, and uh, uh, essentially explain how the amplitude of UF vary in time. So if you have a negative value here, your uh, UF will change the polarity. And if it will be, be large, uh, well, UF will be, or the final field explained by UF will be large. Just to make some uh, uh, clarification from a mathematical point of view, this kind of solution can be obtained with a single value decomposition, which is uh, um, some, uh, 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 let's say, um, uh, a theorem of, of a linear algebra that can help us in understanding or you, uh, creating such kind of uh, matrices. So the um, Z equals U uh, sigma, uh, BG is essentially, essentially the same of what we have uh, uh, done here in terms of uh, a, a matrices uh, a, a multiplication. So Z is the data matrices, uh, U is the UF matrices, and each column is the eigenvector is U and F. And uh, sigma as a diagonal matrix is was not zero or value are the eigenvalues. And these are the weight of each EOF. And V is the PC matrix. And uh, every column represents a PC. So we have three basic components that explain our field. One is the OF or the sum of UFs. The second one, is the weight to, uh, or the relative weight of single UF. The strong, the first are generally the stronger or the more important or those that explain uh, the, the major part of the variance included in the signal. And V represent the matrices of the principal component that explain the time variability. We can obtain this way uh, this process can be uh, applied in any case. So we have a very nice uh, uh, mathematical tool that can be easily applied to our, our data. But the results can be quite uh, tricky. I'll show you a very, well, a, 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 an analysis which is very well uh, um, uh, or easily interpreted compared to, to others. Uh, what you see here, we have um, a, a very large database of uh, sea surface uh, uh, temperature uh, observation for uh, about a century. So very extensive in space and time. How we can, well, detect the, the major spatial pattern and how we can detect their evolution. It's quite difficult, there are terabytes of data. So we have to simplify and try to identify this dominant mode of variability. And UFs can help us. Here you have UF. UF, remember, has X and Y dimensions, so are images. On the right side, we have 
the associate PC, the principal component, and that shows the evolution in time of this uh, of this uh, uh, EOF. And now we can try to uh, uh, um, uh, add some physical interpretation of the result. So uh, if you look at uh, the PC1, so this one, in, in, uh, in black, you have the evolution of the PC associated to the first EOF, which is uh, this one totally red. And in red, you have the global mean SST. You see the two index works in the same way. They behave uh, practically the same and their correlation coefficient is almost one. So no trick. This is uh, the analysis that gives that this one is uh, almost indistinguishable from the global CC trend. So it's easy here to interpret the PC1 as the uh, global warming of the, of the SST. Oh, UF2 has a very nice uh, clear signal that we will uh, discuss in detail in the future and in the next lecture, let's see, which is El Nino. El Nino is a very strong signature in Equatorial Pacific as uh, related to a uh, 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 onset of a very hot or relatively hot tongue in that uh, in that uh, area which is has a uh, interannual variability and uh, uh, um, we have also the uh, minimum value in extra extra tropical area co connected to the this uh, uh, warm warm tongue and um, you have El Nino is, is, is uh, let's say, uh, warm, and uh, La Nina, which is a similar event, is, is cold. Um, the associate PC has in black the, the evolution in time of the PC. In red, you have uh, the cold tongue index calculated in the area. Uh, um, for the El Nino La Nina process. And you see again that the two uh, um, signal goes go very, very well. In, in fact, the correlation coefficient between the two series over more than 100 years is 0 0.87, which is quite significant. So we can easily uh, uh, um, uh, explain uh, the EOFs in terms, or the, the, the second EOF explain the global variability in terms of, of ENSO or uh, Nino, and uh, uh, its time evolution is uh, correlated with the an El Nino uh, index. The third, the third EOF has a special pattern that uh, uh, is connected to the warming uh, of the North Atlantic and uh, uh, the cooling of the Southern Atlantic. The other areas are less well uh, or precisely uh, uh, determined. And if, if you put uh, uh, on top, oops, the uh, the index that uh, Calculated uh, according according uh, 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 that uh, try to explain the multiplicative variability of the Atlantic, the so-called uh, um, Atlantic Mediterranean uh, multiplicative observation. You have a very good very good fit between what is the uh, uh, um, PC connected to UF and uh, uh, the AMO, uh, AMO index. So this happened somehow for for free. They have problem with AOF four, which well something which could be related to some uh, uh, Pacific. Uh, 
uh, multi-decadal variability, but uh, we didn't find any uh, direct correlation for that. What is important to take in, into account is this small number. So the total variability, the total variance of the sea surface temperature global, globally speaking, is explained to the variability is playing for the 26% for the first ALF by 13% by the second one, 4% by the uh, UF3, and 3.77% uh, by UF4. So it means the first three of uh, three UF is playing uh, the large parts of the variability, almost, uh, say, more than 40% of the global variability. All the rest, all the other variabilities, all the other UF uh, has a, 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 a um, percent of uh, explained variance uh, smaller. So the dominant mode here are, again, or can be related to the global uh, uh, warming trend in, in SST, the ENSO phenomenon, and the uh, AMO, uh, Atlantic Meridian and Multidecadal uh, Oscillation. And this is quite quite a, a big result. So we can, we can uh, 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 say that we can explain uh, the behavior in terms of uh, a limited number of dominant processes. We are very happy for that, well, myself. And uh, another example, very quick, on the uh, UF decomposition just for Nino. Nino, we know, is a, has a strong terrain of variability. And again, uh, we have uh, 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 here the UF, uh, you see on, on the left side, um, left side, an UF here. And uh, which is the, the cold uh, tongue of the uh, uh, equatorial area that corresponds to El Niño La Niña. Here, the, the second UF has also uh, extratropical typo uh, and um, that uh, is related to, to uh, El Niño and El Niña. And uh, the, th the third UF is more difficult to be interpreted. But the very message here that with a very strong uh, interannual variability and a recurrent signal, UF explain more than 50% and the first three modes uh, explain the 70% of the variance. So when you're lucky and have a very strong signal, you can detect or uh, ascribe to a very limited number of uh, uh, UF the uh, interpretation or explanation of the of the process. So, and uh, we'll use uh, uh, this uh, or the result of this kind of decomposition in an analysis of many of different uh, uh, data sets we have to discuss in the future. So, we start now with the first of, of, of the most foremost uh, uh, and more evident seasonal cycle, um, uh, ocean variability, which is the seasonal cycle. And now I ask you just to, uh, to detect the variability of uh, monthly mean SST calculated in August and March. So are the two images uh, here the same or do you see any difference, please? I need your help because I'm old and and get tired, and so I I, I would uh, I'm ready to accept your suggestion. Please. Don't you see any any difference between the two images? I mean this. The, the monthly SST for August, the monthly SST for March are the same or do you see any difference? Come on. Um, I think yes, there's yes. a slight difference. 
-hmm. Slight difference, yes. Where? At the top of Africa, we have, on uh, during the August, I think we have one SSC yep. and at the top of Africa. Top? Yes. Mediterranean. Mediterranean has a, a prominent student side, right? But look at the Caribbean. There is, a, in, in this part, no student side, but in the Gulf of Mexico, this is strong. And look at the, the here, the, um, the Gulf Stream. In the Gulf Stream, or in the frontal region, the Gulf Stream, you have a strong variability. Not to mention uh, uh, this part. Look at here. You can have freezing area in 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 uh, in, um, in near Kamchatka and uh, uh, fifty degrees in, in summer. And uh, mostly the most prominent area is the in the in the polar area. Here you have ice until here, and uh, in uh, in, uh, in in March, which is the the Austral uh, summer, is widely reduced. So the scale is is, is wide, and the the the. Um, the meridional gradient is always present, but you can have many, many uh, reasons, especially in temperature, in, in temperate mid latitude and in polar area where the changes are quite, quite significant. And um, you can see also in this, this uh, uh, area of the Pacific, you have warmer, warmer area. And uh, the distances between uh, ISO, ISO terms are more spread in the southern part in August and more, uh, uh, um, see, compressed in, in March. So the first glance, say, go more or less are the same. But if you look at it in details, and the scale is pretty, pretty large, and uh, there are substantial differences. And uh, Okay, so it, to summarize, there is a permanent permanent temperature gradient, no, no, no matter for that. But some seasonal changes can be found at mid-latitude in coastal areas and polar region. And we didn't talk about, but there is a seasonal mod modulation present in the tropics. And um, what is exactly, uh, con con how we can, define the seasonal cycle. Seasonal cycle of, of generic variable is the current variation of the, uh, this variable on annual basis. This variation is usually related to the seasonal change in forcing field. It's not natural or internal variability. It's something which is depending on the sun and depending on the wind. Seasonal variability depends on photo period, wind regime and to less extent to water fluxes. So re, uh, <clears throat> precipitation minus evaporation in some places is important. At the uh, polar area, the um, ice melting or, ice, uh, or, or seasonal ice formation can also play a major role on that. <clears throat> Temperature is the variable that most is sensitive to these changes and uh, uh, the, 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 the fluxes of heat and momentum, moisture, fresh water, and salt gases are exchanged through the sea surface, affecting not only temperature, but also salinity, velocity, gas concentration, also other biogeochemical uh, variable. And uh, uh, another elusive, uh, uh, but yet uh, important variable is the turbulent and uh, the concomitant uh, or uh, turbulent, uh, turbulent driven mixing, uh, which is also uh, changes uh, with the wind stress and with the uh, stratification. So uh, the seasonal variability affect temperature, but also other um, um, 
say, uh, variables. And this is not limited only at surface, but also in the water column through the turbulent mixing processes. Uh, using the terminology of uh, EOF, we can say that the seasonal cycles are the leading mode of variability of uh, um, the ocean temperature in the mid latitude and polar uh, region. And uh, um, the, the air sea heat fluxes and, uh, and, uh, and then the wind regime induce uh, uh, all, uh, uh, has a large feedback on the upper ocean thermodynamics, not only in the uh, just at, at, at the surface. And also, I can say that uh, um, many uh, phys geophysical and biochemical properties and events are present, exhibit a strong seasonal component uh, uh, in relation to temperature, the other uh, uh, water properties like uh, um, the surface ocean circulation or uh, dense water formation, sea level variation, mixed layer depth, and other, other uh, associated uh, processes. Um, which is the, the basic, uh, um, uh, say, uh, way to treat data in order to elicit uh, the, the seasonal cycle? Um, you have could be one. But sometimes we, we are uh, less um, uh, um, it, 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 it's not so easy to interpret the salts. And uh, generally for, for the monthly for, for, for the seasonal cycle, it's better to create a, a sort of so-called uh, uh, climatology. And uh, here we have uh, the, the climatology for the Mediterranean. We have 12 plates, every plate has one month. It's called climatological month. This, this plate is obtained by the superposition of all the data that are available in, in a data set for that specific month, irrespective of the years. So every March or every data from March is sum up and then divided for number of the samples. If you repeat this uh, 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 procedure over the whole month, the year, you obtain the climatology. Uh, month climatology is a good uh, uh, representation of, uh, uh, of, the, of the seasonal cycle. So just to give a look at, uh, um, at uh, this, uh, this plate. This is Mediterranean, the, the, the upper part of Africa, right? As, the, as you told me earlier. And uh, this is the surface, uh, surface temperature. And you see in January and in August, you have a very different colors. We don't have the, the color scale or the color scale is not readable, but you can easily guess that this is, the blue is cold and warm is uh, and, and, and yellow, uh, red is warm, and the difference could be 15 degrees. I mean, in six months, 15 degrees is quite a big change. And every uh, a half an year, you have the reverse. So it is a quite ever and fast changing upper layer all over the whole basin. And this is a quite uh, a, a significant variability in this in this area, and this is the major trend. We made an analysis, and we found that uh, the seasonal cycle is playing, from this, the, depending on the month, from eighty to ninety percent of the all variability in the best. So, uh, as quite quite important signal to explain the system dynamics of of. Um, of the Mediterranean. Um, this is a strong effect also on, uh, on chlorophyll or other uh, um, uh, biogeochemical uh, variable. And um, 
also, uh, confidence is a proxy for biological activity. A biological activity is uh, so important in capturing and sequestering CO2. So CO2, uh, uh, the uh, most important greenhouse gas, is sequestered by biological activity, which follows the seasonal cycle. You can see here in the, this uh, seven plates, each plate correspond to one part of the Mediterranean. And uh, in, um, in red, you have uh, uh, the model the, in, uh, in box, there are data, but you see the, the two go uh, well hand in hand uh, and follow the, the behavior. The increase of, of, of chlorophyll means the increase of the biomass has a prominent seasonal cycle in all the different basins, with some differences for sure, but more or less they strictly follow the seasonal cycle. They mean that they depend on the uh, uh, temperature, on the uh, irradiance available, and uh, the turbulence and the, the depth of the mixed layer, and so on. The, the physical forcing is the responsible of the changes in the, uh, in the, in the, the biochemical uh, uh, variable in a one to one uh, uh, correlation. Um, we don't want to touch, uh, well, it, I don't say it's it easy, it's easy, but it's more easier to explain the signal side variability. And we saw uh, probably tomorrow how to quantify this kind of uh, uh, um, uh, seasonal variation. But there are areas that are much more complex. For example, we saw in the, in the general, in the global uh, SST uh, um, plate that uh, the highest high latitude has a prominent uh, uh, seasonal variability and also because uh, ice. And if you see in this plate, uh, you can easily uh, imagine how different are the um, SST and salinity condition when the, the ice is formed both in Arctic, this is March, this is September, and uh, uh, in Antarctic, February and September. The area covered with the seasonal ice, ice cover uh, changed dramatically. And obviously, all the, 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 the variable associates changes in terms of heat fluxes or um, salinity, because you know ice uh, is not saline, and so uh, uh, oh, the, the, the uh, additional salt is released in the surrounding waters, and so salinity changes. And when uh, the ice is melting, it melts, so the, uh, the, you have an immediate freshening of, of the water. In, in, in uh, the thermodynamic of ice also impact the global uh, uh, thermodynamic patches of the water. So it's quite quite a complex issue. And also the solar radiation goes through uh, uh, the, um, the, the ice cover, but uh, for on a limited part. So I, the, the things get complex. We just mentioned that this is a, a issue not always or not fully understood up to now, but uh, the seasonal size cycle is present, it is evident and, and more complex. The same you can say can can um, can uh, the same thing can be said also for coastal areas. Coastal areas are quite important because a large part of the human activity takes place there, and they are on the on the um, very contact with the, uh, the, the, the coastal region, and uh, uh, the, the changes in, in the coastal area are directly perceived by population living uh, on, on the shores, and uh, and the, the, the processes are quite complex there.
Uh, in addition to what we saw, uh, the seasonal cycling in, in, in the solar radiation and uh, in the wind uh, uh, intensity and direction, we have lateral freshwater input due to river runoff, continuous inputs, a tidal mix that interact with the stratification and uh, interaction with, with the upper mix layer and the bottom boundary layer. Just to mention a couple, some processes that are present there. So, this made uh, uh, the, the pro problem uh, very complex and largely site dependent. So we cannot explain the behavior of the of the of, of the synthesizer in a unique way as we try to to do for the uh, open ocean. So we just mentioned that these uh, pro this uh, issue, the issues, this uh, area has a specific behavior in terms of season cycle. The season cycle exists, but is side, largely side dependent. Uh, we'll start to discuss a bit the seasonal cycle in the tropics, uh, which is less obvious than at, uh, what happened in higher uh, latitude. And uh, the very question is, is any seasonal cycle uh, uh, in the tropical areas? And uh, the answer is yes. And he et al. published a, a very famous or a similar paper that showed uh, uh, in two years that the, the, the surface, surface temperature in uh, um, equatorial Atlantic, equatorial, in the tropical Atlantic, tropical Pacific has a uh, quite evident and uh, covering seasonal cycle. And uh, even at the equator, uh, you have an, an annual cycle, which is prominent, even if the, the sun cross the equator twice a year. So also semi-annual cycle is present. And uh, um, why we have this annual cycle? Because uh, in principle, if sun has a symmetrical behavior, a semi-annual cycle should be the dominant one. There is a, a very funny things that happen in the Atlantic Pacific that uh, this uh, annual signal is ascribed to the asymmetry of the time average field relative to the equators, essentially due to the fact that uh, intertropical convergence zone, you see here, is an atmospheric pattern that is related to the Hadley cell. So you may remember that Hadley cell is a convective cell that uh, encompasses all the tropical uh, area, northward and southward the 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 the, uh, the equator. But the convergence zone is not exactly on, on the equator, but it is shifted slightly shifted northward, and. The response to the first is similar in both oceans, but the driving mechanisms are different. So why? Uh, there are different explanations. One is uh, the differential heating uh, that takes place in uh, extratropical area in, uh, in the two in the hemisphere. The other one is the aspect of the continental geometry in the two oceans. So, even if we have this kind of uh, a seasonal cycle that is ascribed to the asymmetry of the and heating of the ocean uh, and, and the wind regime at the, at the equator. But the mechanisms they explain is different. Uh, this um, the, 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 the shape of the of the, the coastal geometry can help we we'll see better later but it's not not enough so and uh, there is a, a, a more say advanced explanation of the specific Pacific seasonal cycle um, for the for the a tropical similar cycle. This is a two-stage process. As the first is the variation at the eastern boundary, and then the propagation of the SST anomaly along the equation. Uh, what happened if you have here uh, the, uh, the equator, and here we have northward 
uh, wind that ha takes place because of the intertropical uh, uh, conversion zone is uh, slightly northward the, the equator. So you have continuous northward wind going going there. This uh, um, these winds are stronger because the strengthening of the local hardly circulation boreal summer is is is, is uh, 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 increasing the intensity of these uh, winds. This creates a, a, an additional evaporation, and this cools SST. So the SST here is cooler, and uh, also favor the entrainment. So we'll discuss more in detail what the turbulent entrainment is, but essentially um, um, brings cold cold water into the uh, into the into the mixed layer here. Um, this happened. This process is particularly effective on the east side because the thermocline depth, so the mixed layer here, is shallower compared to that. And what happened? This creates a gradient in SST at the equator, uh, 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 at, the, at the equator. And this uh, temperature difference in water is transfer, readily transferred in the atmosphere. This creates, again, an additional westward uh, 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 winds, onset of the western winds that go. This uh, obviously at, at, at the equator, no Coriolis force, and the, uh, the westward wind goes directly to the uh, uh, warm SST pool set in the in the uh, western part of the of the Pacific Ocean. This uh, drives a further cooling of the oceanic mixed layer, and uh, what is important, all the other, all the, um, uh, um, the um, connected mechanism due to this uh, uh, um, uh, wind takes place and no single mechanism dominates. So evaporation, wind driven entertainment and advection all contribute to create this uh, uh, season cycle. When the um, uh, the boreal uh, intensification of the local Hadley cells uh, ceases, uh, finished, well, everything go back in the previous situation. And the, uh, um, the um, westward wind no longer blow. And we are uh, restoring the original one. And uh, OK, I think. Uh, uh, my time is over. I'm here for question, and uh, I hope you you enjoy. I enjoy it for sure. is a very interesting topic. But uh, please, if you will have comment, a question, or otherwise, I I, I stop here, and. Uh, I can say we can meet again on uh, on Friday morning the same same times. Okay. Most probably I'll give you also uh, some notes about this uh, lecture, but uh, they are not uh, complete. So please take notes and uh, have a scheme. Some parts are more developed, are other less developed, but. Uh, Please uh, don't forget to keep notes during my my lectures. Okay, thank you, thank you for attention, and hope to see you soon. Okay, on, on Friday. Ciao. Bye bye. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao.